Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be checking out Vincent by Don McLean. Very, very beautiful song. A lot of people seem to think it's called Starry Starry Night, but that isn't the correct title. Um, I'm going to show you a few different ways of playing the song. Uh, the exact, like the recording version that I played at the beginning there, it can be a little bit tricky. I can't play it accurately and sing over the top of it, and I'm guessing that many of you are going to have that same problem. So I'm going to show you just a really simple, like a strummed version, so you know what the chords are. I'll show you a really simple finger style version, and then I'm going to take you through the exactly as in the original recording kind of version because it's it is a really interesting pattern uh, because it's so difficult to explain the pattern I've written out a kind of a tab with just X's showing you what strings need to be picked because I can get away with that without uh, infringing on all the copyright problems so you need to go and check out this page or the, the page for Vincent on my website where I'll give you that little kind of kind of a pseudo tab, it's really a tab, but it's just showing you what strings need to get picked. So if you write the chords above it, it'll probably make that a, a lot easier. So I'm going to start you off with a really, really simplified kind of version of the chords, and I'm going to show you some little tweaks that you can make to those chords to make them a little bit more interesting as well. But let's start by keeping it really, really simple. So we're going to start with a G chord, so we've got starry, starry G to C, and back to G for a bar. Paint your palette A minor and grey. We're going to have two bars there on the A minor. Now look out on a bar of C chord to a bar of D7. The darkness in my G shadows on the G to C and back to G. Sketch the trees and the A minor for two bars. Catch the breeze and C chord chills in D7 on that snowy linen G. C, G. In the chorus, now I under A minor for a bar to D7. What you try to G to me to E minor How you suffered for your A minor to D7 How you tried to set them E minor They would not listen They did A7 know how to A minor to D7 Perhaps they'll listen G two bars. Okay, now before we get into the finger style, I want to explain some of these little chord variations you might like to kind of put in there. Now, some of them are kind of, they come from the, the fancy finger style version. Okay, but you are allowed to just muck about with them, especially if you're strumming. You could explore putting these different chords in yourself and do it do it your own way. I think that's a really good idea for this kind of tune, especially because doing the original version and the finger style and singing is really difficult, and it's a really nice song to sing. So you don't want to make the chords so complicated that you can't do that. So uh, here's a couple of little things that you might like to try. So right at the beginning, instead of going G to C and back to G. It's quite nice to go from G, but I'm just using this two finger G, okay? So third fret with the third finger, muting the fifth string, open, 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 and little finger playing the third fret of the thinner string. That's G. Now we can get this really nice chord uh, called G sus, the most holy of chords, just by putting the first finger down in the first fret of the second string. Okay? And that sounds really nice at the beginning. It's what's going on on the original recording of the finger style version. So just G to G sus and back to G for a bar. Now when it comes to the A minor, really on the original recorded version again it's an A sus chord. So if you have a regular A minor and you lift off your first finger, you end up with this A sus 2 chord, right? often commonly just called A sus. Okay, so that's a nice one to put in there. So G, G sus, Back to G for a bar. Now moving to the A sus2. And then to A minor. Okay, you don't have to, you can do that. C, C major 7 is really nice halfway through that bar. So C, and then lift off first finger, and you get a C major 7. Okay, little tweak that you might like to put in there. Then to D7, to G. 
no matter what you're doing, it's nice to put that little pickup in there as well. So, which is open D string, hammering the second finger down the second fret. The D string's the fourth string, for those of you who don't know your note names of your strings yet, which you definitely should. Open D string, fourth string, hammering the second finger down in the second fret of that string, then playing the open G, and then hammering the second finger down in the second fret of the third string. Okay, and that's just a nice little lead in again. G, G sus, back to G. And now we've got A sus2 to A minor. Or the other way around works as well, actually. Up to you. C, C major 7 to D7, and then to G. If you want, you can put that in as well. So moving on to the chorus now, we've got the G chord, which kind of hangs over. Now I under A minor. And you can lift off your first finger and put it back down if you like there for a nice little A sus2. Also sounds nice as a little hammer on. Okay, whether you're doing finger style. Okay, or strumming. Having a little hammer on with the first finger is always a nice thing to have with an A minor chord. So G. Now I understand A minor to A sus2 to A to D7. What you tried to say to me. You've got to get that little walk down in it, actually. That's a really nice thing. Anytime you're going from a G to an E minor, it's nice to put this little walk down. So regular G. We're just going to put the second finger down in the second fret of the thickest string. It's just that, that root movement. Going from the G, F sharp bass to E minor. And on the E minor, it's nice to put little finger down in the third fret of the second string. Gives you an E minor 7 sound. Just nice after the, there, with the root movement down, E minor to E minor 7 to A minor, with a little hammer on again if you want, to D7, how you try to set them E minor. On the E minor you mostly want to just strum it and leave it because it's kind of how the song goes, so wouldn't keep strumming for that bit if I was you. Then we're going to A7, now to A minor or A minor 7, okay, so if you're going to go to A minor 7 just start with your regular A7 chord, okay, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0. Uh, and then put your first finger down the first fret of the second string and leave the G string open. So it's open, second, open, first, open. Okay, sounds nice in this one. And then to go to the D7, you're going to leave your first finger there. Just move second and third fingers to get down to your D7. And then we've got the G chord again. Okay, so with all of those kind of fancy variations, starry, starry G, to G sus, to G. Paint your palette A sus2 to A minor and any variation of those. Look out on a C chord to C major 7 with D7 that knows the darkness in my G. Shadows on the G to the sus4 to G. Sketch the trees and the A minor and the sus2 with a hammer on if you like. And we catch the breeze and the C to the C major 7 in D7 on that snowy linen G sus to G. And now I under A minor sus to A minor to D7. Oh, what you tried to G with an F sharp bass to E minor to E minor 7 for your A minor. D7. How you tried to set them E minor, they would not listen, they did A7 know how. To A minor 7, to D7 they'll listen G. Before we start looking at different finger style patterns, I'd like to take you through the chords for the middle section as well. So they're very similar to the chorus, or at least they start that way. So it's got the G. For they could not A minor you to D7. Still your love was G 
to A minor. And when no A minor was left inside upon this C minor starry night, you cheat your life as F major 7 off an E. I could have A minor to Vincent. Sounds a bit weird, but this C was never meant for one as D7 as you. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to sing the chords and laugh at the same time. Anyway, so that's the chords for the middle section. Um, the one part that beginners will find a little bit sticky there is the C minor. Now, I learned this song years and years ago, and, and I didn't know how to play C minor bar chords. So I'm going to show you the little cheat I used, which was moving the A minor chord up three frets, and then only playing the fourth, third, and second strings. Okay, It's really important that you don't play the open strings with it, because it sounds really rank if you do that. So. Um, uh, when there's E minor was left inside upon that starry, starry night. Okay, so just move your A minor up three frets and strum the four, third, and second strings. Okay, don't get those open strings, it sounds really bad. Okay, but it's a really nice little way of kind of getting through that part of the tune, you know, because it seems a shame not to learn the whole song because you don't know one chord. So that's a little way around it. So let's start talking about the different finger picking options that you have for this song. Now, if you're going to play the original as recorded by Don McLean on the record version, it's pretty complicated, right? It's difficult to play. There's very little kind of continuous pattern. It has been worked out and he played it consistently live and stuff as well, but it's, it's, it's kind of his finger style arrangement. Okay, now it's totally cool to do your finger style arrangement. I hadn't done the exact same thing as him until a few weeks ago when I decided to transcribe it properly. Uh, all of my life, I've been playing this since I was a teenager, I've just made up my own different finger style patterns, right? And I would kind of recommend that's what you do as well. I will show you before this lesson's out the actual proper version as well, because it sounds really nice and it's worth learning, and you'll learn a bunch of skills in the process. But when it comes to playing this tune, especially if you're going to sing it, you want to try and figure out your own finger style version, okay? And what I'd recommend you start off with, the most basic finger style version, would be doing thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger. Thumb playing the bass note of the chord, first finger playing the third string, second finger playing the second string, and third finger playing the thinner string. So just one and two and three and four and... Starry, starry G, G sus to G. Paint your palette A sus 2 or A minor, depending on what you like. Look out on a C chord to C major 7 with D7, knows the darkness in my G. So you can put that little cool fill in if you can, and then G sus to back to G. Sketch the trees and the A sus 2 and A minors. Catch the breeze. And the C chord and the C major 7 to D7 on that snowy linen G. Again, just try it. Try using that really, really simple strumming pattern. If you want to pick it up a notch, another strumming pattern that works really well is to do thumb and second finger at the same time at the beginning of the bar and then first finger, second finger, third finger. So thumb and second finger first, then first finger, second finger, third finger. One and two and three and four and... Okay, that starts to sound a lot more like it, and that's kind of where I'd go to if I was making up my own. I'd start with that and then just see what feels natural under my fingers. Okay, you don't have to feel like it even has to be a set pattern, because the original version is not a set pattern. It's really exploring stuff and it's adding in extra notes as well, which, of course, you should feel free to try out yourself as well. Okay? It's so much more fun, I think, to make up your own finger style patterns than do the original one. But because I'm a real stickler for transcribing and I did the original one, I'm going to show it to you now. So if you're not really interested in that, then I'd just go away now, try some of those finger style patterns and go away and just try and play the tune and enjoy playing the tune and make up some of your own stuff. There is a lot to learn by learning his original version as well. Some of the little movements, especially there's some kind of single note lines that fit really nicely with the melody. So you might want to stay and watch some of that and just maybe nick a few bits 
out of that. That might not be a bad idea. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a close-up of the left hand, and I'm going to take you through the left hand variations first. A lot of people ask about the t why I don't have a two camera thing, and that's because I don't think that you can concentrate on two things at the same time. So I'm going to take you through the left hand first of all and show you where all of those things are. Then I'm going to take you through a slow-mo version of the picking hand as well and make sure that you've got all of that down. But remember, really helpful for this kind of stuff is to have it written down. So either write it down yourself or go and check out on the website where I've got a, a, a kind of tab of crosses which just show you which strings that you need to pick if you're going to play that original version because it's not in the beginner songbook. Too complicated for beginners really to be honest. Um, this is not a beginner's kind of a finger style arrangement. Um, so uh, you might find that, well you will find that actually very very helpful. So left hand first of all let's check out all the chords. So hopefully you're already familiar with the chords, so I'm going to be talking mostly about the variations. So the, the first thing is that little run-up. Okay, you want to fit that in. I'm just going to be using my second finger. You might want to do it already holding the G chord down with your third and fourth fingers, okay? That's the G we want, so you should be able to do those hammer-ons with those other two fingers down. If you can't, it'll make a good exercise for you. Okay, so G. Then first finger down for the G sus. Back off. Okay, it's really interesting here, he's starting to pick out the melody. So G, G sus. Now the second bar, G. And see, you can't probably see it there. My little finger's off. Right from the beginning of that second bar of the G, I'm playing there the B string, D string, G, Open E, okay? Then I put my little finger down in the third fret of the second string, then first finger. So we end up with this little melody. It's lovely. Okay? Open E, third fret of the second string, uh, first fret of the second string. Then we go to the A minor, only it starts with an A sus. That's the first bar. Okay, and then we've got a little hammer on with the first finger. We're going to play, be playing the, the B string and the A string together and hammering on. Okay, and then we lift it off again. Yeah, it's kind of interesting this little bit. So we've got the hammer on, pluck the fourth string, third string. Open thinner string, first finger off again, play the B and the A strings together, pluck the fourth string, then first finger goes back on, we play that and lift off the third finger to, to reveal the open G string. And the reason for that I think is because is he's moving his third finger over here, he probably didn't mean to in inverted commas, but just the movement. of that third finger moving from there onto the C chord, okay, which is the next part, then first finger off for the C major 7, then to the D7, okay, you can see there just third finger is off, open E string, and then put it down, and then, okay, that last one you don't need any fingers down at all. There you need it back down. Okay, so let me play that first section nice and slowly. After all of the first section is repeated, there's a slight difference the second time we come to that last G chord of the sequence. Um, so it starts the same, but then we've got this little lovely little movement. So playing first string, fourth string, second string, third string, and now first finger going down the first fret of the second string, second finger going down the second fret of the fourth string, slide it up to play it back, 
and then lift it off and play the uh, D and B strings again. Okay, now we've got this. It's lovely that they're going into the chorus part. Uh, the, the picking pattern's a little bit weird. Uh, it's just a G chord, but then we've got this little... which kind of harmonises with the melody, which is open B, first fret, third fret, and back to the B again. Now I under, now I under. Harmonises beautifully with the melody line. So that's one of those little bits that I'd uh, definitely try and put in there, I reckon, even if you're doing a different uh, type of finger style arrangement. Uh, so then we're going to the A minor. Okay, so it's A minor with a hammer on, third finger, uh, little finger going down the third fret of the second string, leading to the thinner string. You can hear it makes a melody. Again. To D7. Okay. It's a little bit, it's a very odd little bit this, because it kind of skips out of position, it's a little bit awkward. Again, it's just like the record, D7, then third finger sliding up to the fifth fret. I only really got that because I managed to find a video of him playing it, and it's, I never would have guessed that's what it was. I could hear the notes on the recording, but couldn't figure out how he was doing it. Anyway, then G. G with an F-sharp bass to E minor, 7. So the third finger going down there, uh, third fret of the second string. A minor. Just a little first finger lift off. D7. E minor. A7. A minor 7, D7, now the G, okay, it's a little bit weird again, G, second finger down, second fret, thinner string, off, third finger down, uh, little finger down, third fret of the second string, before got that little run up again to start the next verse. Okay, so the G, second fret, open, third fret. Okay, let's have a look at that whole of the chorus now. The fun begin its finger style time. Now this is going to be pretty tricky to explain and pretty tricky to learn so please go and check out that tab sheet that I've put on the website because it will help you a huge amount trying to learn a complicated finger style pattern like this. Now the general technique I'm going to be using is thumb is going to play the thickest three strings and fingers one, two and three are going to play the th thinnest three strings on the guitar pretty consistently. Okay, now there are times that it's going to feel easier to do something else and that is okay. You're allowed to change the finger picking patterns to fit what's comfortable for you. Don't be afraid to do so. So uh, let me just play the verse through really slowly now first of all.
Okay, so you can see there, thumb and second finger together, then fourth string, third string, first string, thumb and second finger together again, fourth string, third string, first string, back again, thumb and second finger together, fourth string, third string, thinner string, now thumb and second again together, fourth string, second string, third string. Now to the A sus2. Okay, it's pretty easy. Thumb, third string, sorry, fifth string, third string, second string, first string, thumb and second finger together, fourth string, third string, second string. Now thumb and second again with the little hammer on, fourth string, third string, first string, thumb and second finger again, fourth string, second string, third string, which will be open because it's the moving to the C chord. Five, four, three, one, two and five together. Four, three, two, fingers are getting a bit tangled up there, but hopefully you're still following along. D7, fourth string, third string, second string, thinnest string, which will be open, and then again, thinnest and the fourth string. Third, second, third, and now we've got the first string, fourth, second, third. And then that run up again. Okay, second time through, now we're into the lead up to the chorus. Okay, so this is thumb and second finger, pick, slide, pick, pick. Now this little bit is just a little bit awkward, it's not hard, it's just weird. Starting on the bar, the beginning of the bar, with the first finger playing the third string, thumb playing the thicker string, and then if you're going to stick to the rule, thumb has to jump over to play the fourth string, then the, the third finger will play the thinnest string, and that's just a bit, bit weird. So usually I'm doing thumb, first, and then using my first finger there on the fourth string. Okay, but it's really, you know, find a pattern that works for you. You know, that does work as well to get the thumb to jump over. Again, you could use one finger to that, you could alternate fingers, you could just use your second finger, whatever works for you. Let me just play through that whole chorus section so you can see it. Okay, I'm changing it up already. I'm using my first finger for those two little, uh, that little run up. It, it is going to change, you know. Be be uh, be cool with that. Be cool with some letting your fingers do some changes and playing how it feels comfortable for you, you know. So. Uh, we got that little weird little bit on the G after the third string, sixth string, fourth, first. The little part that harmonizes with the melody. Okay, really nice the way that kind of brings out the melody here. We got the thumb and first finger together, fourth string, third, second string, then uh, thumb and second finger together, fourth string. Second string open to the D7. Thumb and third finger together, playing the fourth string and the first string. First finger, second finger, first finger, and then now this time, thumb's gonna move over and play the A string, the fifth string. The same time, third finger's gonna stay playing the thinnest string. 
Now we've got the little slide up there from the third fret to the fifth fret. Probably want to use your third finger there. Okay, the G. Now here straight away, I'd, I'm probably not going to jump with the thumb from the thicker string to the fourth string and then use my first and second fingers. A lot easier to just jump those fingers. Instead of being on the thinnest three strings, they move down. G, G with an F sharp bass to E minor. But now they've jumped back again, so now I will jump with the thumb, playing the, the sixth string, fourth string, third string, first, second, fourth, second, third, to the A minor chord. Again, my fingers have moved over there. In fact, I can do both of those just as comfortably. So it, it'll be up to you to see which one you feel like. Uh, probably recommend sticking with the, the, with the program uh, just to keep things consistent. So use your thumb and your second finger on the second string, thumb again on the fourth string, third string, second, fifth string and second string together, fourth string, little hammer on there with the first finger again, which is going to pluck the second string, second finger. Okay, then plucking the third string to the D7. Fourth string, third, second, first, fourth, third, second, third. Very common finger style pattern. E minor, little strum. We're nearly there. Okay, the A7 is a little bit uh, weird finger picking pattern. Uh, I'm going to move my fingers over again from the thinnest three strings to the next three along. I use thumb, one, two, one, and now I'll move it back and thumb's going to play the fourth string as well. It's a little, you don't have to do this, like I said, make up your own finger picking pattern, but um, I'm using thumb, one, two, one, then thumb is playing back on the fifth string and third finger's moving back over onto the thinnest string. Then thumb is playing the fourth string, second finger, second string, first finger playing the G string. Okay, but you could do it another way if it feels comfortable, but that's the one that works for me. Change to the A minor seven. Okay, thumb and second finger together again. Playing the fourth string, third string, second string to a D seven. Okay, then to G. Okay, we're back to our little pattern again. The three fingers on the thinnest three strings, thumb playing the thickest three strings. I really hope you've made sense of all that. I've been putting this song off for quite a few years actually because I knew it was kind of difficult to explain, difficult to learn, difficult to transcribe. There's lots of things difficult about it, but it's not difficult to just play it if you just make up your own finger style pattern. And I really recommend that you get into doing that. Learn the actual Don McLean one because there's some beautiful little moments in it and it's always a good skill to learn somebody else's finger style pattern because you get new ideas for your own finger style kind of arrangements and stuff. It's a, it's a good thing to do, but you know, to play and sing it like that, that's his way. That's what felt comfortable for him when he wrote the song, you know, and you don't have to feel like that's always going to be the right finger style pattern for you, you know. So explore it. Use it as a tool. Learn some cool stuff. Experiment on your own as well. I really hope you enjoyed playing this song. It's a really beautiful one. And I'll see you for plenty more guitar lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.